be not just a school teacher, also um, an educator in other organisations. You have a very strong education background. You know about learning and design, a learning design principles. You know how to pull information together and you know about student focus. You know about how to tailor those programs to meet the learning outcomes or the needs of any learner type. Um, for any need, any requirements. So you can work in government agencies, you can work in um, uh, other, organ other institutions, Questacon, Arboretum, all sorts of places, museum, gallery, all those places have education offices. So, um, and you create your own work as well, company, your own organisations, your own companies for tutoring, for all sorts of things. There are lots of opportunities that people with an education degree go into straight away or move into while they do other stuff or have career changes. This education degree that we're helping you achieve is uh, not a standalone thing, it's a very dynamic thing. And we'd love to see you come back and do some further studies. Um, some of you may even come back and do work with us. Um, you may come back and do masters or PhDs and then come back as a lecturer sometime. <laughs> Don't be scared of those options. That's my short answer. No. Yeah. Like most things, it depends on whether you give them the correct information the first time, and then obviously, you know, your course—if your course complete and there are there's stand down time for like Christmas holidays, then obviously there'll be a delay. You have to expect those kinds of delays. Yeah. But otherwise, I would always say go to the TQI website and have a look at what they say. You'll have your unofficial transcript, okay. yeah. And I think you might actually be able to, and I'll just have to check with my admin team, be able to request an official transcript because it has to go through to get an official transcript, and that's not official until all of the academic assessment boards have happened through all the layers of the university. So we have one in our discipline, it goes to a faculty one, it goes to a university assessment board, and it goes through these layers of confirmation and clarification and affirmation. So it's all... It's all very rigorous, a lot of work in the background. So that's why there's a time lag between when you finish, submit your assignment and you get your results to when things can be produced um, as official documents because it's a really important passport that we're giving you. So we don't take it lightly, yeah. I don't know if this makes sense to this, but roughly, so say we're handing our last placement report mm -hmm. and we're supposed to be course completing after that, like we're finished, how long would it roughly take to get all the results back and then like then it's the transcript that you need to get in order to get your TQI card to take? Yeah. If your placement and you have that report in yeah. before, at the end of the exam period, if you, I mean you'll all know about the exam period, that exam period is when, that's the earliest time, the end of that exam period is when our assessment boards start to meet. So the week after the end of the exam period is when our assessment boards start to meet. That's when unit conveners have to put their results in all their grades. And this is why there's a bit of a lag. If you haven't finished your final placement or you've got an extension on assignment or extenuating circumstances, you're sick or injured or something, and you have a withheld on a grade, and this is what I'm saying, it's going to be, it gets, could get close to the wire if this is in December. Um, no. Anyway. Oh, for mid-year. Yeah. yeah. So the time lag is timed around assessment boards. So after the official university exam period finishes, the next week is that whole week where academics are doing the assessment stuff, finalising grades, approving grades. That's why it's that Friday afternoon that you get the text from the university to say this is your grade for your unit. So if your PRAC report falls outside of that exam period, like after it, then you'll have a withheld WHW on your mark then as soon as the unit convener can change it, that WHW, to the grade that you UP or whatever grade you get for your PRAC, report, PRAC unit, then that will trigger the time frame. And is that, are they in, like, how long does it take for the convener to do that or you don't know? Uh, 
I can talk individually with people. That's probably the better thing to do because I need my diary with the schedule and all that sort of stuff. But there is a time lag and it's for a real, like, good reason, solid reasons, yeah. And each case depends on which day it falls and stuff like that. But the convener can't amend a grade that hasn't been approved yet. So they can't interfere in that grade process during that one week window. It has to happen after that. That's okay. Look, all those, they're very fine, detailed type questions that will be individual. And our aim is for that not to happen. So this is where I'm asking you to really focus and pay attention to um, when you know, if you know that your placement's not going to finish, the placement's delayed for whatever reason, or you need to do an extra three days because you were sick during your placement, and that adds three days onto it or something like that. And those things are unavoidable. If you know those things, can you please let your unit convener know and say that you're a course completer for semester one um, and that can they just keep that in mind and copy me into that email, I think. Yeah. Those sort of little mechanisms and that awareness, I think, will pay off. Yeah. Keeps us all in the loop and that's what I'm asking. Please keep, me, keep us in the loop. Okay. Other things from over there? Yes. I think it's just helpful. I'm not too sure that. Yeah, that portfolio helps to pull things against uh, together against the HL standards, which is why we design the assessment items like that. No. Again, have a look at the TQI. Any registering body that you want to be registered with. No. No, that's right. So if it doesn't say that you need one, then you don't need one. I would read it quite simply, quite straightforward. It is useful, however, though, to demonstrate, if you've got a good uh, e-portfolio in whatever platform you design it in, you know, um, then it is a good dem an, an elegant demonstration of your, or collection of your um, demonstrated evidence. Only use it, though, if it is an elegant demonstration of your evidence. Don't put it up if it's a clunky thing. Refine it. So as Kathy said, it, it is to be guided by what TQI and any other registering authority mm. you know, um, at say is it a condition of the registration. And and having a portfolio is not a condition of registration. But it's a really useful thing to have yep. that you've already identified you will need it in order to graduate proficient. So because not all teacher education you guys are involved in two oh three JA and two oh four JA, there are other teacher education courses here. It is an exciting time. As you can tell, I'm excited for you. Okay, we might um, call it quits there. Thanks.